What's happening, musical sophisticates? Trumpeter Bobby Spellman and Trumpeter Sam DeShane here for a traveling episode of... Trumpet with Bob! All right, Sam and I are coming from a gig just now in Northampton, Massachusetts at the Northampton Eats Yeah, Festival. Taste of Northampton. Taste of Northampton. Last night we were playing at the Cape Cod Cultural Center. Before that, we were playing in Newton, Mass, and we're about to go to a Greek wedding. And we've been playing with Sam's band, Chochek Brass Band, playing a combination of Sam's original music and some traditional Balkan brass music. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to just take a little time on the road to talk about some of the influences that uh, that come from the Balkan brass band world, talk a little bit about the history of that music and um, you know some of the facets that might appear in music throughout the world. Uh, so, Sam, you've been playing kind of Eastern European music for a long time, klezmer music with Kleswoods, mm -hmm. and uh, when, was, when, did you, when did you first hear Balkan brass music? When, was, when did that first come into your consciousness? Uh, I first heard Balkan brass music when I was in high school. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, this uh, Egyptian-American friend of mine, was hipping me to a bunch of Arabic music, mostly Egyptian, some Lebanese music. Um, and uh, so I got into this like Middle Eastern music world and um, opened my ears up to something outside of Western uh, Western classical music, which I was really into, Western jazz music I was really into. Uh, but it kind of opened my ears up and um, to like more Middle Eastern and Eastern European music. And I found this, uh, so I, I was already thinking about it and I was at the library in high school just um, probably pretending to go and <laughs> try to find some books to read but I ended up at the CD section looking at all their CDs and I saw this big uh, brass band CD the Fanfare Chocalia mm. this, this great um, a Romanian big brass band and I was like oh a bunch of brass instruments this sounds kind of cool and so I grabbed the CD and it was just like this fire fiery incredible virtuosic uh, powerhouse music and that's how I first was introduced to Balkan stuff it's just this one CD and then I went to Berkeley Music School a couple years later and uh, started kind of playing with some people that were doing klezmer music and um, kind of this fusion klezmer jazz Americana kind of fusion stuff and then I uh, got into Balkan music playing some Greek stuff some Turkish music tr all traditional stuff mm. Anyway, so it kind of morphed into or turned into this path of getting really into Balkan music and, you know, subbing with other bands and listening to a lot of stuff and sure, yeah. you know, really digging into just listening to tunes and learning songs, you know, yeah. so that's how. Just as an overview for people to know, the Balkans is a region, it's sort of a, it's sort of a cultural and geographical region in southeastern Europe, mm -hmm. includes... Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, Macedonia, um, uh, Turkey, Ukraine, think, right? and, uh, Moldova, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of other countries around there. I'll put a little map up so you can see it. It looks like this. Oh, nice. I oh, is that, that what you did before? Easy. Was there a thing that you're gonna you just, put in you're there? You're gonna put it in there. Can I go like this and then? Yeah, do it real quick. Do it. Okay, I'm gonna do this and then Bobby is going to insert something interesting. Maybe it could be the Chochik Brass Band logo. Oh yeah, let's do it. Here you go. Ready? Point. <laughs> it's uh, magic, be right magic there. modern technology. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, can I move it to the side? Is yeah, that cool? Right. Yeah, I don't know if I can. We'll have to work on the well, technology. We'll see if you can do that. Yeah, but. yeah. That'll be fun. <laughs> interesting style of music because it incorporates uh, sort of the there's a there's a there's a history in that music that comes from the Romani people coming up from the Indian subcontinent in the yeah. year 1000 ish and going all the way through uh, Europe through Spain into Eastern Europe and that I feel like there's a lot of sounds uh, mm -hmm. neither of us are scholars in this specifically but there's a lot of sounds that come from that sort of Romani musical tradition yeah. that blended in with what was it Ottoman Empire brass yeah Ottoman music. Empire yeah for sure you know like the uh, you know what a really good 
uh, documentary by Tony Gatliff to watch to check out. It's called um, Lacho Drome. Yeah. That one co- it literally covers all the way from like Rajasthan all the way down there in the east, all mm-hmm. the way to Spain, and the entire Romani musical and cultural um, life and, and music and the people of that whole region. Yeah. But so, and it's some of the music on there is the most beautiful music. Uh, that you'd ever heard. A lot of like big time Romani players are on that that um, that documentary, but it's also just really fun to watch. Yeah, so, it's I mean, amazing. It's a nice introduction to 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 Romani music. Mm. So some of the there's a couple of uh, elements that I think you've taken from Balkan brass music that mm-hmm. are particularly striking to me. I think especially especially coming from like American jazz and other mm-hmm. styles of music that maybe we grew up listening to. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things that come to mind are one the sort of ornamentation that happens in, especially in I guess it's in brass or in strings or clarinets Both, or yeah, anything for sure. like that. Like yeah. there's a lot of really Vocals interesting. Too. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's a very interesting approach to the ornamentation of the music, the way that play around with that yeah as you're learning that I think you have a good command of like a lot of these kind of sounds these textures to you know playing through this stuff um, did you learn that you learned it by listening to their records I feel like a lot of people listen to it and sort of yeah know, figure and that out there's a couple people that I had studied this a little bit with you know um, like I'm not some master to Balkan trumpet player or anything like that but I've learned a lot of songs you know, I learned a lot of Greek and Romanian and Turkish and Bulgarian Serbian Romanian songs mm-hmm. um, Macedonian over the years just playing with different bands and uh, also by getting some albums and just learning the songs that's pretty much it you know yeah, I sure. didn't study the history very much to be honest you know but um, I've always really loved playing the music but I studied with um, Teb Stevig this guitar player who also plays oud and the saws, and he studies a lot of Turkish music. Is definitely probably his, uh, you know, specialty at this point. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I learned a lot from him. By I would bike over to his house, and he would just literally on guitar teach me the lines of the songs, mm. one one piece of the song, and we just repeat it over and over again. And one little thing was wrong, and he'd do the di 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 like the the articulation. Oh yeah, different. I'd ask him about it. And I kind of figured out how to do it on the trumpet. Mostly it's really just listening to it a lot and then practicing it really slow, you know, like yeah. obviously everything else. But um, and after a while, you kind of start to hear hear it better. And, um, you know, it's a very different technique than classical. I mean, I grew up playing classical orchestral stuff and brass quintet music and chamber music. Like that was my thing. And then I went to Berkeley and kind of branched out and played a lot of different other styles. And I was in the three-part horn section for a reggae band called John Brown's Body for about 10 years. And did a lot of horn section for pop bands and stuff like that. Um, so it's completely different, uh, not totally different than like jazz playing and all that stuff. You know, it's different shapes, you know, different articulations, obviously different like approach to playing. The choppiness of it, the endurance is ridiculous compared to all those other styles. I, I remember also, in a similar note, seeing fan, fan far, fanfare, fanfare, funfare. I think it's funfare chocolia. I met them once, and they they said that's so like, oh, there I am. I'm okay, just so we can't pronounce it well, but I'll put the Such name right cool here. Such a cool crew too. Great band. Check it out. Amazing band. So I saw really them at, cool guys at Town Hall in New York a couple years ago. And one of the things that I, th- I found really fascinating is how much, and this is going to be a trumpet playing crowd, I think, uh, so you'll appreciate this, but how Uh-oh. much they were using like the third. <laughs> right? Oh, oh no. <laughs> trumpet players. Trumpet players, man. Love uh, you guys. But there's a lot of uh, using the third valve for one and two and various alternate fingerings in order to get some of these like, yeah. sounds and things like that. I was surprised yep. at sort of the different way they approached it. Also, a lot of, you know, a lot of Eastern European. Uh, horns are the rotary valve flugel horns, mm. rotary valve horns, which has a completely different sound, and there's a, a whole different way of playing those instruments. You know, you like, you know, have you ever seen That's like, true, yeah. you know, some of those European orchestras? They have rotary valved, you know, instruments and everything. Yeah. Uh, so th- there's two other things about uh, sort of 
characteristics of that style of music that I think are striking that I think you've taken from that to, to write, you know, incorporate it into your own music. Uh, one of them is the scales. So, yeah. uh, I know, for example, there's a lot in what we might call Phrygian dominant, but I think, you know, it has different names around the world, but I think yeah. in Jewish, in like uh, Klezmer music, it might be called Fragish. Is that right? What's yeah, the Klezmer probably, but, you yeah. know, and then, um, I mean, like the, basically the scale, like, I mean, there's a couple scales that are super common, you know, just go up the actual scale, you know, say it was like concert D, mm -hmm. it'd be like a, um, uh, you know, uh, the one, the flat two, major third, major fourth, fifth, flat six, flat seven, root. You know, like that's a really common one. Yeah. Yeah. Flat nine, flat six, seven. sharp four kind of sound yeah like the you know the that'd be like the root major second minor third sharp four regular five and then depending on you know and then you know natural six flat seven i guess mm -hmm. you know yeah But a lot of these, depending on where you go, there's like, you know, the scale changes going up and going down. Right. You know, especially a lot of Turkish music does that. And it's, I haven't studied it enough, but I know, you know, based on the songs, like it, it's... It's fascinating. You can really yeah, hear it great. when it shifts a little bit in the, in the And that's music, why, like, you know, I'm not a, a master of this stuff. You know, I basically listen to a lot of it, like, like a lot of music, you know, and I'm influenced by um, a lot of the melodies, but I'm also influenced by jazz melodies and, and pop music melodies and uh, Afrobeat melodies and a lot of New Orleans jazz and the three-part harmony stuff, especially in like, you know, a big part of my writing uh, that's unique in this band compared to other like Balkan brass bands or um, a lot of other brass bands is, you know, I, I incorporate, first of all, we're small. There's only five, sometimes six, sometimes we have another drummer, but I incorporate a lot of uh, three-part harmony, uh, like horn writing, like similar to like uh, you know, 1970s reggae music or like funk bands and stuff like that where there's like three strong, you know, the trumpet, double trumpets and trombone playing these three, you know, like hit those triad lines like really strong for portions of it. And then there's like one melody that's going in and then you add the harmony. jumping into that is kind of interesting is a lot of the the time signature stuff that you yeah. kind of incorporate that into mm -hmm. it and it's interesting because i think in western music we get a little um sometimes we get a little analytical about you know time signatures but what was interesting learning a lot of the traditional music um in particular like the kobanitsa rhythm yeah. and things of that nature is like how it's really about you know it may be in 11 8 for example but it's the subdivisions you can really feel it as a dance like it's dance music it's not really supposed to be it's not math music it's like these yeah and even today yeah, when we were playing music at all. like people will dance to it and they know some people know how to dance to it yeah there's but, old like grandmas from like bulgaria that will come up that <laughs> they don't know how to play instruments or anything like that but they'll jump up and play these uh, dance in 11 8 because it you know once you're like 11 8 is a good example of that because it sounds all once you're three four five like counting to 11 that's not what you know basically the feel is, and I learned it with Tev a lot, which was really great because you know guitars, um, they're comping always. You know, the bass, boom, 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 whatever, whatever bass line you want to, you know, play over it. And then there's the the upbeats of it, the up chicks, the comping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, you could count that, but usually it's like slow, or fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, like a five count. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh
don't don't so check it go day don't day you need to learn the bass and also the comping and also be able to talk over it uh no <laughs> da, 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 da. i don't know this part but da 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 So you're thinking about the bass, the copying, and the uh, melody, and then soloing over it. You you know, this is like the beginning of is just knowing the melody. Like like any style of music, you need to know the melody and the and the rhythm and stuff. But, mm -hmm. but then it becomes a, at a certain point you really be able to, you can feel it like a dance rhythm. It yeah, it's like exactly. And it's all dance feel, music, you know. Totally. Yeah. yeah. The other one that that uh, we've been playing is. The, uh, that Alexandros rhythm in seven, yeah. which kind of feels like three, even though it's in seven eight. You can count it in seven eight, but I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways you can feel it or whatever. Yeah, like. seven. There's a, I mean, there's different ways to do eleven also, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's all, uh, you know, it's not all two two three two two, you know. But and seven two, uh, you know, the one that we were playing a bunch is the song in Alexandros. It's a, la da da da. A slow, pretty song. So it really helps to, you know, subdividing is cool, but uh, uh, uh. Once this is always internalized, then you can start playing around with it and, and and really getting the feel. But I remember practicing all these like trad tunes like this, playing the bass line, playing the bass line mm. as if I'm a, a, a tuba player, you know, in, in this setting, the bass is the tuba, at least in a brass band. And then, you know, a lot of times the trombone and some of the uh, mid, mid horns, mid range horn stuff are like the piano or guitar and play both those and then learn the melody or really melody first and then do that and then combine them all together and the solo you can just you know there's a whole other thing about soloing but sure but then you've really internalized it so playing and improvising over that becomes much more natural it doesn't feel like you're counting you know right, you're just yeah. counting like when I when I think of an 11 especially that Copanitza 11 I'm not counting ever. It feels like four four to me. Right. You know. Sure. Yeah. And which is it, it's a groovy feel thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Cool. So I wanted to. I, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of this stuff as we're playing sort of elements of this music and encourage yeah. people out there in the on the internet to go check out some of this music. If also, people want, oh yeah, go on. I should say also, you know, uh, you know, I learned a bunch of these trad tunes not incredibly studious about the history and where it comes from and all this stuff. I just learned a bunch of songs because I really liked how it sounds. It was it's that simple. Totally, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, after probably four or five years of playing a lot of this stuff, I started writing a ton of music, you know, like a ton of music. And it was just in my ear of what melodies kind of were like, uh, but I also had other, other influences as well. But just writing a bunch of music also really helps you. You know, when, when now that we, I started this band about 10 years ago and I wrote this stuff that's heavily influenced by Balkans, but also, you know, Afrobeat and Western classical too, and um, like brass music and New Orleans and uh, all, all sorts of three part harmony stuff that I was, you know, horn section kind of writing that I was talking about before. But, um, you know, I learned a lot by writing and then coming back to the trad stuff, 
you know, I understand a lot better through trying to write, you know, so writing music is really, really a good way to learn as well. Mm. Um, you know, and that's probably any style of music. But sure, you're trying to apply some of the ideas and just get it out of your head and like yeah. work it through. For sure. Now, if people wanted to check out some more sort of classic Balkan brass bands besides Fanfare, Chokarlia. Marko Markovic, he's mm -hmm. a badass Serbian guy. Um, American dude, you know, the Slavic Soul Party from Slavic New York are incredible. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of other bands, like, you know, a lot of the, like, like Fanfare Chokalia is really crushing. There's a million, not a million that good. Those guys are top of the line that I was naming. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of beautiful, you know, just traditional um, Bulgarian, Romanian, Serbian, Greek brass bands that are just absolutely out of this world, you know, that just literally look up traditional <laughs> brass music and they'll find some yeah. wonderful stuff. And I'll tell you but what, and all Tarif to Hajduks, oh, that's yeah. my favorite band. They're not a brass band at all. They're all playing fiddles and, and then some other instruments there. I don't think there's any brass in that, but it's the same world and it's really musical because this stuff has a tendency to get so technical, you know, it's like, and after a while you're like, oh my God, okay, I get it, you know, <laughs> but, um, and it's insane, but, uh, like Tarf to Hajduks have a way of doing that. Like they can all, they're all complete virtual, insane virtuoso musicians, but they have a way of making it so musical also, which is also Marko Markovic. Unbelievable. It's just insane, you know. I saw him uh, in New York. His a band years ago, is so though. freaking crazy, good, you know? dude. They're, yeah, next level. It's a father and son band together, and there's some, you know, the mm -hmm. Gucha Festival is this big brass band festival in Serbia that happens every year. That's all like the, you know, it's a big competition, but also people just from all over the world come down there. But all the, a lot of the big bands from out there go and hang out and play a million shows. And, and mm. um, Goran Bregovic. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of great videos of him, too, on the internet. Yeah. I'll some put some really links down uh, in the description. You can check out some of these things that we're talking about here. And there's some, like, there's people who've done a lot of cool stuff with that sound. Like, there's an American band called Beirut. Which is, you know, this guy plays, uh, I forget his name, but he plays, I think, ukulele and sings these wonderful melodies and songs. But he also plays Rory Feld, uh flugelhorn, I think, mm. or, and um, uh, has, like, that element to the music. And he did a lot of really interesting kind of indie rock meets um, meets the Balkan, traditional Balkan brass sound. It's really, really neat. Yeah. These guys from Germany, La Brasse Banda, have definitely some of that influence. Anyway, this is going can, beyond the sure, traditional but it's, stuff. You know, but. Tell, yeah. You can always check out Chocheck Brass Band on Spotify and all the places. And uh, let's see, Bandcamp and at Instagram yeah. at Chocheck. What is the Instagram handle? It's just Chocheck. You know, and Chocheck is a, uh, is a rhythm and a uh, popular, you know, really common rhythm out there. So a lot of my tunes are Chocheck rhythms. Um, so, but Chocheck is C-O-C-E-K. And there's different ways to to spell it depending on who you know where you are and what they country want to find is you spelling on. it but yeah. our, our our band is spelled C-O-C-E-K and then brass band so Chocheck underscore brass underscore band on Instagram nice yeah cool alright thanks so. gang for sticking around while we chat a little bit and kill some time on the road uh, talking about Balkan brass music hope you had a nice little time check it out if you're not familiar with the style and you're into playing the trumpet and brass music, you're going to get a kick out of it because it's, it's really a deep, uh, deep well of uh, interesting music. All right, gang, have a wonderful time. We'll see you on the next one. See ya. See ya. Alright friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helped in your understanding of the musical world and in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like this video, you can let us know by giving it a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more musical education videos going forward. You can also follow me on Instagram at Bob Spellman for some more musical fun. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students online as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens and greater New York City area. 
You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com or you can send us an email at ridgewoodschoolofmusic at gmail.com. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can, try to set you up with a great teacher for the kinds of music that you're looking to study. All right, gang. Well, thanks again. And until next time, happy practicing.